Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Chanel Deauville in the large size. All right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's start your workout, let's do your laundry, whatever it is that you do, come join me. We have some awesome, awesome topics to cover today. Starting with the first question from Courtney Desmarest, hopefully I said that correctly. How many of your luxury goodies are from the pre-loved market? Besides considering resale value, are there any other factors that you consider when adding, when deciding between new and pre-loved? Not to sound like a snob, but new just sounds like such an appealing option over pre-loved. Even my husband mentioned to me that he thinks I would not be as happy since I didn't get to feel the euphoric feeling that comes into play when at the boutique selecting the item. Uh, great, great question. And uh, I'll be honest with you, there is something very exhilarating about buying, you know, purchasing an item at the boutique. The overall experience, you know, especially if you have an awesome sales associate or one that goes above, beyond, uh, above and beyond, it really adds to the whole experience. Uh, all right, so how many of my luxury goodies are from the pre-love market? Um, I believe I have four, four or five, I think five actually, five. Five items I have uh, that, I, that I was able to get on the pre-love market. Uh, besides considering resale value, are there any factors that you, can, that you consider when deciding between new and pre-loved? Uh, yes, what I really love about the pre-love market, um, for me, I love to be able to find something that is either discontinued or something that I wasn't able to get my hands on at the moment, or uh, the pre-love market is a great way to find something that's a little bit more evasive at the boutique. So let's say uh, that you're having a hard time finding, I don't know, like a Chanel wallet on chain. You wanna get it at the boutique, but every time you go in there, they say that the wait list could be like 50 or 100 people, and by then there could be a price increase or something to that effect. Going the pre-love route, uh, you're able to, to acquire that item a lot quicker. So that's the main reason why I love the pre-love market. Uh, but for me, I've always said that being able to save any type of money on any luxury good at any point in time is always a positive. And why, what I really like about that type of reasoning is also the fact that if I'm able to save money on on let's say a speedy 30 that I've been wanting, right? I'm, if, if I'm able to save money on that and in turn I'm able to save enough money to get a second item either at the boutique that is brand new, like a small leather good, then I would much rather do that. It's kind of like two in one, uh, you know? So I, you know, I love the pre-love market for so many different reasons and it's all a matter of personal preference. I know that there's a lot of people out there who don't prefer the pre-love market. They prefer to go, you know, go to the boutique and get everything brand new and that's awesome. Like I said, there is something about um, that exhilarating feeling, that type of, um, it, like you said, you said it perfectly, the euphoric feeling that you get when you're at the boutique. But if I'm able to save a little bit of money on something that I have been wanting for a long time or something that's discontinued, then going that route uh, is is awesome. You know what I mean? Uh, like I said, the five items, yeah, the five items that I have, one of those uh, I had always wanted it, and when it came up, I, w I just jumped on it. You know, I jumped on it, and it's something that I use all the time, which is the Chanel, uh, the Chanel pink wallet, the caviar wallet, the small zip wallet. I think that wallet is gorgeous, and I didn't have the opportunity to get it at the boutique. So when I saw it on the pre-love market, I was just like, oh my gosh, it's here, it's here, it's there. I, you know, and I went for it, and it's one of the best decisions I've ever done. Uh, so that's why I'm such a fan of the pre-love market, uh, but it's not for everyone, and it's all a matter of personal preference. If you prefer to go uh, in, you know, that route, if you prefer to to, um, to have that, that sensation, it, it's wonderful, it's great, but there's also a huge sensation in saving quite a bit of money. Uh, and especially like, for example, sometimes the classic flaps can be anywhere from uh, a savings of you know, fifteen hundred to a thousand to twelve hundred dollars versus going uh, at the boutique. So it's all a matter of whatever makes your heart sing. If you like that type of, if you like that feeling when you're at the boutique, then by all means go that route. Uh, but hopefully, I was able to to help a little bit. But the pre love market is amazing, especially because you find some some fantastic, fantastic pieces that uh, maybe you didn't think uh, you'd ever be able to find at the boutique. This next question, the person wanted to be anonymous. Uh, what bags do you consider basic bitch bags? Do you agree with others out there on the speedy and the never full? Uh, all right, so I really contemplated whether or not I wanted to answer this question. I know that there's a lot of talk, especially on Instagram within our community about the whole basic bitch thing and whatnot. Um, 
I think a lot of people will disagree with me and that's fine. Like I said, this is all just one person's opinion. I am sick and tired about hearing about the whole basic bitch mentality. Really what it comes down to, it's a very condescending way to tell someone that they like something popular. Uh, at the end of the day, whether it's popular or not, I think someone should go for an item if it makes their heart sing, if it's something that they like. That might not always be the case. Some people might get want to get something because it's popular. Uh, but. It shouldn't matter what anyone else says. It doesn't matter if someone says, oh my God, that's so basic of you. Why are you going for a speedy? Why are you going for a never fall? Ugh. I mean, <laughs> I just think the mentality is so just, just stop already. Just stop. If someone likes something, who, what, what does it matter? Who cares? Go for it. If it makes your heart sing, if that other person is not contributing to whatever it is that you're going to be buying, if they're not, if, I mean, if you're not using their money, then what does it matter what anyone else says? You know what I mean? I just take everything like a grain of salt. If someone's sitting there trying to make you feel bad, don't let anyone, don't let anyone make you feel bad for, um, you know, or try to make you, uh, or to ridicule you for something that you like. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know, someone might say that my uh, that my Chanel Deauville is this, my Ch my my Louis Vuitton is that. I don't care. When someone comes at me and they say, "Oh, you're so basic for liking this. You're so basic." Oh my god. I don't care. All right? Because at the end of the day, I'm a grown woman and if I if I if I work hard for what I like, I'm going to buy what I like, not to be perceived a certain way by you know, by society or anything like that. I don't care. If I want to go out there and I want to wear my Valentino flip-flops because everyone has them. If I want to wear my Cartier bracelet, my Hermes bracelet, I don't have a Cartier bracelet. I'm just saying. <laughs> and I want to have my Starbucks and my Speedy or if I want to have this and I want to look like everyone out there, what does it matter? Who cares? Obviously, if something is popular, it's popular for a reason, either because it's great quality, because it works. The Speedy, my goodness, has been around forever, forever. It's not like it just came about in 2013 and everyone and their mother is buying them. I mean, they've been around forever. That's why they have vintage pieces. But I, like I said before, I think the mentality is just ridiculous. I think that sometimes I feel that when, you know, like I, like I said before, I've had people come at me and I just want to say, God, you're so ignorant. Like, let it go. You're trying... By someone calling you a basic bitch or by someone saying that, they themselves are sounding like a basic person because it's almost like, it's like the cool thing to do to call someone out for liking something popular. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it drives me crazy is what it does. And like I said, a lot of you might disagree with me and that's fine, but I don't think anyone should have such an influence on whether or not you like something or whether you decide to buy it. You know what I mean? And I feel that, um, you know, it's, it's a very known, um, it's a very known phrase, but opinions are like assholes. Everyone has them. But I feel that when it comes to giving an opinion, you can be a little bit more tactful. You can be a little bit, uh, not necessarily having to walk on eggshells, not to that extreme, but I feel that sometimes people want to voice their opinion just to get a reaction. So they act in a really bitchy manner. And it's just like, okay, now you're just doing it because you want to get likes. Now you're just doing it because you want to, you want to stand out or something like that. I don't know. Like I said before, I'm not here to, to, uh, you know, to try to, to make, make a riff or anything like that in the community. But at the end of the day, no one should tell you what you should or shouldn't spend your funds on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Next question from Prince Jaden. I see behind you there are Chanel and Valentino shoes. I was wondering, do you have a pair of Christian Louboutins or are you interested in investing in a pair? Uh, great question. Once upon a time, many, many moons ago, I did have a pair of Christian Louboutin wedges. Uh, I thought that they were beautiful. I never really wore them and when I did, they would kill my feet. So I ended up selling them. I know wedges aren't the same thing as heels. So would I invest in a pair of heels? Probably not. Uh, only because of my lifestyle. I'm not really the type of person that wears heels too often and when I do want to wear heels I want them to be a tad bit more comfortable and I know that some of the silhouettes might be a little bit different some of them might be a little bit more comfortable than others 
but for the most part, I have found them to be very uncomfortable on my foot. Uh, but every time I see them, I think that they are gorgeous. And kudos to anyone that can wear them more than an hour and a half or two hours. I mean, just trying them on, I feel like my foot was, I felt like my foot was going to burst out of them. I've tried going up a size, I've tried going down a size, what have you. I've, I've tried it all and it doesn't really end up working out for me. Uh, but like I said, I'm not really the type that wears heels, but I think that they are I mean, they are divine. <laughs> Let's be honest, they look fantastic anytime anyone wears them, you know, and I'm always attracted to them, but I know in my heart of hearts, I wouldn't be able to get away with them. And you know, what are the, what is, what are his famous words? Uh, I don't know them, uh, you know, verbatim, but it's something like, if you want comfortable shoes and I'm not the fashion house for you. <laughs> so it makes perfect sense, you know, but uh, unfortunately, I will not be adding Christian Louboutins anytime soon, unless, I don't know, unless I just say suck it up and, <laughs> and put them on, I don't know, but when it comes to footwear, I it just, I really like the whole comfort thing. I really do. You know, I want to be able to walk around for a little while without looking like Bambi on ice, just kind of, you know, <laughs> I look like a creeper to be honest. So, uh, unfortunately not, uh, but great question. All right. Next one from Aaron Russell. Do you love the same fashion houses for makeup? Do you prefer Chanel and Dior, etc., Or do you find yourself going drugstore to invest in your bags? I ask as when you said you wear cheaper clothes, I do the same to buy makeup. A 26 pound Chanel lipstick and an eight in an eight pound Primark dress? Uh, wonderful question. And first and foremost, so lucky because I love Primark. I know that there's one, there's some on the East Coast, but we don't have one on the West Coast. <laughs> but I digress. Uh, all right, so do I love the same fashion houses for makeup? Uh, do, we, do you prefer Chanel and Dior? Um, I prefer Chanel for their skincare products. I really do. Uh, I haven't had the best success with their nail polishes. Now, I have older nail polishes, you know, like three, four years old. Uh, and I know that there's new formulas and they have, like, I think, a gel coat or a gel type of um, a polish now. And, you know, I, I like the colors, but I haven't, like I said, I haven't had the best success with the polish from Chanel because I feel that it ends up chipping very, very easily. So I'm not too big of a fan on them. And the eyeshadows that I do have, um, some of them work out really great and some of them are kind of just like, you know, it's, it's nothing really special in my opinion. Uh, but when it comes to Dior, that's where I've had the best success, whether it's their highlighters, their eyeshadows, their lipsticks, their lip glosses. I just absolutely love the line. Uh, but I feel that I end up going more for or not necessarily drugstore, but more like Too Faced, Urban Decay. That's usually where I end up going. Uh, the the thing that I wear from drugstore is my foundation, which is L'Oreal. Is it L'Oreal? I think it's L'Oreal or Revlon, one of those two. And I have a couple of mascaras from L'Oreal as well. But for the most part, like I said, it tends to be either Too Faced or Urban Decay or right in between that, uh, that price point. And if I do end up going for something a little bit higher end for luxury makeup, uh, then, you know, I feel that with those, sometimes the items last a lot longer. Uh, you know, like the Tom Ford uh, Illuminator uh, Duo that I have. I've had it for a while now and it still has quite a bit in there. So that's what I do like about luxury uh, makeup that I feel that it lasts a lot longer. Uh, but for the most part, uh, Dior just has really uh, exceeded my expectations when it comes to uh, high-end makeup. Uh, but great, great question. Next question from Linda Rossi. I can see your Louis Vuitton Speedy bags behind you, but what LV bags do you still have in your collection and why do you love the Speedy so much? Uh, love your questions. Uh, all right, so what Louis Vuitton bags do I still have in my collection? Uh, I have the I have three Speedy Thirty Classics, Speedy Twenty Five Bandolier, three Neverfulls, Pochette Matisse, Pochette Accessoire, Alma Bibi and Damia Ben. Is that it? And um, the the toiletries, if I you know, since I use them as clutches, so the toiletry Twenty Six and Damia's were in the Tahitian collection the toilet or the pochette voyage and the monogram eclipse and the rest are luggage pieces so the niece bb the toiletry 26 and then the three key balls i think that's it yeah i think those are the bags that i have uh all right and why do you love the speedy so much i don't know what it is to be honest i think what i love about it the most um you know i you know we all know about the history so i do love the history about it but i love the silhouette i love how simple it is and 
I just, I don't know, it kind of, it has that whole Dr. Satchel, uh, it's a mini keep all type of thing. Uh, so I think that's what I like. And I love the fact that I'm able to throw everything in there. And it's just the, you know, just a small little, a little, small little case. And even though I tend to prefer totes because I'm definitely a tote girl, there is something about a top handle bag that I find incredibly attractive. Uh, and you know, it's not always the easiest to, to shop around or to go around with a top handle bag because it can get a little heavy or if you put it on your crook of your arm but there's just that beauty it's almost like a timeless um, a timeless beauty that I feel just really elevates the bag and really just kind of makes the bag sing on its own so I don't know if that makes sense or not but uh, I absolutely absolutely love this speedy it's almost like my heart sings for it every single time I see it even though I am definitely a tote girl so yeah, <laughs> I have much, much love for the Speedy. Uh, all right, next question from Lux Lover VB81. So I have decided I need a backpack, LOL. The never ending list of needs. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I have uh, looked at Louis Vuitton and Chanel and they are not doing it for me. Mostly because I want one that zips up as I know the drawstring will drive me to drink. <laughs> but also because I think the prices for those two fashion house uh, backpacks are a no-no for me. Can you suggest any good brands? I need to wear, I needed to wear well and be decent sized canvas or all leather. I am open to both. I am six foot one tall and bootylicious. <laughs> Love your sense of humor. I think I even said that in the comment. Uh, all right. So Louis Vuitton and Chanel aren't doing it for you. Uh, you're open to sizes of canvas. I'm open to both. Uh, any good brands? I'd have to say that one that has a fantastic price point, uh, they have some that are in coated canvas, they also have some uh, that are in regular canvas, uh, but like I said, the price point is great, they are a zip up type of uh, bag, that's MCM. Uh, MCM, I think, is probably one of the first ones that I have ever really uh, thought about when it comes to a backpack, uh, in the you know in the beginning when I was all for backpacks, uh, because I'll be honest with you, the drawstring from the Moyen Montserrat that I had and the Montserrat backpack, it was oh my goodness I know what you're talking about because I thought it was a beautiful backpack but the drawstring drove me crazy and I know some people say that you can set the drawstring so that you don't have to constantly open it up and close it back up kind of like with the petite no way uh, but it was just it was a little too much for me. Uh, but MCM, uh, they've been around for quite some time and they have really great quality backpacks. Uh, so I would definitely take a look at them. I think they retail from, uh, if you're looking for the regular canvas, they're $675 or $695. And then the coated canvas is $790. And like I said, they do have that zip up option so you don't have to worry about driving yourself to drink <laughs> with the drawstring. So that's what I would recommend. I would go that route. Uh, I know Fendi also has uh, some really great um, some really great backpacks. Another one is Gucci. Gucci has uh, a really great, uh, I forget the name of the exact backpack. If I find it, I will put it on the description box below. So we have a little bit more eye candy, uh, but it is all leather and I believe it retails for fifteen hundred or sixteen hundred I could be wrong it could be somewhere around there uh, but take a look at those uh, I'm sure that there are a couple other uh, wonderful backpacks out there if you guys have any suggestions let us know in the comment section down below uh, but uh, for great price point very durable coated canvas I would go for MCM if Louis Vuitton and Chanel aren't doing it for you so uh, hopefully that ends up helping out and they have leather trim so it's not just coated canvas uh, for the MCM Next question from Seahawks number one fan. I want a Cartier Lovering so bad, but I'm stuck in which metal to get. I wear white gold mainly. Wedding set is white gold. For costume jewelry, I wear gold with my wedding set. But for this ring, should I get the white gold or the classic gold? What would you do? Uh, wonderful question. Uh, the Cartier Lovering. Ah, this ring is gorgeous. It is on my wish list. I did a video on it last week. If you guys uh, haven't checked it out, I will put it at the end of this video. Uh, all right, so with the Cartier Lovering, whether you go for white gold, whether you go for yellow gold, I think either one of them, either one of them are gorgeous. They're gorgeous on their own for different reasons. I feel that the white gold is a little bit more, it's a little bit more fresh. Sometimes I feel that the silver might be a little bit more casual. Uh, and when it comes to the gold, 
Uh, for me personally, I ended up going for the gold as far as which one I added to my wish list, just because with my skin tone, I feel that the gold ends up just showing up a little bit better. Plus, I also feel that the that the details kind of seem to pop a little bit more on the gold, on the yellow gold versus the white gold. At least that's my own opinion. Uh, my wedding set is also white gold and the rest of my fine jewelry for the most part is, it is yellow gold. I didn't even realize that. Uh, but I also wear a lot of silver jewelry, uh, sterling silver from Tiffany. It's something that I'm always, you know, I'm always, always wearing, but I'm also the type of person that tends to mix and match my metals. I never, uh, I never really try to go for a matchy matchy. I always end up just being all over the place, to be honest, when it comes to jewelry. So it is a matter of personal preference. What I would suggest is take a couple of your fashion, um, your fashion jewelry, your costume jewelry with you when you go into the boutique. And that way, when you have the love, uh, the love ring on, you can kind of see how they look. And there might be something that pops out that you're just like, oh, I want to go for the yellow gold or I want to go for the silver or for the white gold. Uh, but either one of them, you can't go wrong, like I said. But uh, for my personal preference, the gold just seems to speak a little bit louder in that sense because it is fine jewelry and I tend to prefer fine jewelry for yellow gold uh, except for like I said my wedding set I will never I will never take this uh, I will never take this off and I will never change it because it has so much meaning behind it uh, but they are gorgeous my goodness they are gorgeous gorgeous rings and just the simplicity of it I think that it just it just speaks so many volumes, you know what I mean? So hopefully that was able to help and good luck and let us know uh, which one you end up going for, but they are stunning. Uh, all right, next question from NP. What do you think of the Louis Vuitton Petite Malay? I'm surprised you don't own one yet considering since you're such a, such a Louis Vuitton lover. Think I'm gonna go with the Chanel Rectangular Mini as my next purchase, but no harm looking at the Malay as an option for a future per, uh, for a future purchase. Previous versions barely fit anything. Apparently, they're made a tad bigger now. Would you buy one? I'm not a diehard Louis Vuitton fan, so would you advise me against it, especially with the high price point? Uh, wonderful question. What do I think of the Petite Malay? I think it is a beautiful bag. It's, you know, it's it's very small, and I know that uh, I often say that looks can be deceiving. Something that can be small can end up fitting quite a bit of items. It just depends on how you end up fitting them in there. But with the Petite Malay, um, as beautiful as it is, and I have to say it has some amazingly intricate designs to it, uh, whether you go for the ones that are uh, in the in the canvas or leather, just the details that they have are insanely gorgeous. Uh, but personally, I'm not too big of a fan of, uh, you know, uh, for them. Uh, the price point is incredibly high. Uh, I believe that the least expensive one is 5000 5500 or something like that for a small little bag and just based on the price point that it has and how much I could end up fitting on it it, it wouldn't end up working out for my lifestyle uh, but I think that like I said before with all of that said even though it, it does have a high price point even though it is a smaller bag the details that they have are beautiful absolutely beautiful and it's a really not I mean if you are a Louis Vuitton collector or for anybody out there that is a Louis Vuitton collector they want something different to use as a clutch not necessarily necessarily you know um you know like an evil clutch or a favorite or anything like that if they want something completely different something that i don't see too often uh then the petite malay would be a great option to go for but unfortunately for me and my lifestyle uh it wouldn't end up working out but i cannot take away from how beautiful they are and the last question from ng's evidence there are two of them uh, the first one is, I have been saving up for my first Chanel Jumbo double flap in caviar leather with gold hardware. I plan to purchase it pre-loved and I would like to know, in your opinion, what is the most you would pay for this item in today's market? Or rather, what price range do you feel is acceptable for a very good condition Jumbo that comes with, at the very least, an authenticity card and a dust bag? Uh, love this question. Uh, okay, so... You've been saving up, and what is the most that I would pay for this item in today's market? And I do have some eye candy because I have been failing at eye candy once again. So here is the jumbo double flap, the black caviar leather with the gold hardware. Uh, in today's market, on the pre-loved market, if it comes with the authenticity card and the dust bag, uh, usually if I end up going for the pre-loved market, um, I you know I do appreciate it when it comes with all the other bells and whistles. If it comes with a receipt or a copy of the receipt, the box and things like that. Uh, so I have as much of the original item as possible. Um, in today's market, 
for a very good condition jumbo or the price range, I would have to say definitely under 5,000, uh, probably anywhere from 4,700 to 4,700 dollars to 4,650 to 4,800, uh, and for a a great condition, an excellent condition, I would have to say 48 to 49. Uh, and for something that is in brand new like condition, it would be at most, at most $5,000 or maybe 5,100. It really depends on what it comes with or even the age of the item. If it's something that's a lot newer, then um, I feel that paying a little bit more is fine. If it's something that's a lot older, even if it's uh, 10, you know, 10 years, seven years or anything like that, then you can definitely end up deducting more, uh, more off the, off the price point or off the price tag. But the reason why I say at most 5100 if it's a brand new, never been used, still has, uh, you know, the, the protective stickers on the hardware is because even at that price point, some people might disagree with me, which is fine. Uh, this bag retails for 5500 at the boutique. After taxes, it was, 50, it was like $5,900, almost $6,000. So if I end up paying $5,000 to $5,100 for an excellent condition or a like new condition, I'm saving $800. And um, to me, that ends up being a lot better than the, you know, than the almost six thousand. Now, if something's in very good condition, as you mentioned, that just comes with the authenticity card and comes with the dust bag, uh, it also depends on the age of the item, as I mentioned, and. Um, very good can be interpreted into many different ways. Very good might mean that it has, um, you know, a little bit of corner wear or it has uh, quite a bit of wrinkling on the inside or you, even when you open it up, it might have some wrinkling right in here. So it's all a matter of how, um, you know, someone interprets that, that very good condition. Uh, but I would have to say that the 4700 46, 4700 should be fine because it doesn't come with the box. It doesn't come with the original receipt. Um, and even though those things might be small when it comes to the resale market, again, when you're going for the for the pre-loved market, you want to get as much of the original item as you can. And if that's not possible, then you definitely want to, you want to be able to save some money because that's, that's the whole point, right? You want to be able to save some type of cash on it. So for me, the biggest thing is not having to pay tax on an item when I'm going the pre-loved loved route. Unfortunately for me, uh, as much as I love Fashion Files, since they are located in California, if I am to buy anything or when I have purchased something from them, uh, I actually end up having to pay tax on top of it, which is kind of, I mean, um, some of the prices aren't the best depending on the item. So for me, if I have to pay an additional tax on top of it, it doesn't really uh, work out for me to go the pre-love market, uh, the pre-love route with Fashion File. That's why I usually end up going for Yogi's Closet because it's out of state and I don't have to pay that tax. So uh, to answer your question, like I said, I think the 46, the 4,700 right around there for a very good condition bag, I would assume is more than a fair price, but there's a lot of other details that have to be factored into that price point as well. So hopefully that was able to help. Um, and I am so excited for you uh, to get your first Chanel. That is, so, that is so exciting. So if you can, if you are on Instagram, I would love for you to send me a picture when you do get it. because I. I would love to I would love to congratulate you on your first Chanel so that is awesome but hopefully that was able to give a little bit of information and the second question I hear a lot about cost per wear and I really don't understand the concept or even how some are able to calculate this value could you please explain it uh, yes definitely when it comes to cost per wear you take the price of the item you divide it by however many times you see yourself using it and that equals the cost per wear so for example I often say that the mini pochette or the six ring key holder have paid for themselves multiple times over. I've had them for for eternities. Uh, so if you take the price of the mini pochette, for example, and then I divide it by however many years I've had it, um, I think some are, one of them is like seven or eight years that I've had it. And then that comes out to, I think it was pennies, or I think it was like five, five cents, two cents. I was, I mean, a fraction of a penny, to be honest, when it came to the mini pochette, uh, in Damien, uh, in Damien Ben, because that's the one that I've had the longest. So things like that is how I, 
um, you know, that's where the cost per wear comes that they end up being, they end up paying for themselves and they end up being incredibly low versus having something, let's say for example, that um, you're looking at a handbag that's $3,000 and you only see yourself using it twice a year or three times a year. The cost per wear is going to be a lot higher versus something that's, let's say $6,000 that you will use every single day and you will continuously use it for many years to come. That $6,000 bag or that $6,000 item will end up being a lot less in the long run because you get more use out of it. So hopefully that was able to, to answer your question as well. All right, you guys, so that does it for Minx Monday Q&A. I hope I was able to help. I hope I was able to give a little bit of, uh, of information. Uh, and I know, I know I have been lagging with the whole eye candy. It's been kind of crazy. Uh, for this week's lineup, uh, I'm going to shoot for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday because that's my normal schedule to upload. But this month is uh, is a little hectic. We have our wedding anniversary. Uh, uh, plus, I have to get everything ready before we go on vacation. I have to, uh, you know, I have to take care of my other responsibilities. So my apologies. It might end up being all over the place. Um, I'm going to shoot for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, like I said, so I can keep on track. Uh, but I might end up going for Wednesday, Thursday, and I see my, I foresee uh, uploading quite a bit on Friday, like Friday evenings or Saturday mornings, in order to be able to get. It, uh, that third video out. So I'm sorry, you guys. I'm sorry I won't be able to join you for work or uh, or anything like that. Uh, but it is it's gonna be a little crazy this month. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, you guys, so if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week. And I will see you all later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.